Thank you. Shalom. Good morning, people of God. Welcome to our show, In His Presence, a show brought to you by Rafa TV from the ministry, Shekinah Glorious Faith Ministries, which is led by Prophet Isaka. We are based in Johannesburg. The ministry is called Shekinah Glorious Faith Ministries. Shekinah means the presence of God. And we know that when we enter the presence of God, God has a solution for us. So that is why this ministry is called the Solution Center. Because when you step in here, surely God must open your file and surely a solution must come for that problem. All right, so this show is going to cover many ways we're going to talk about healing, prophecy, the deliverances. And in today's show, we're talking about prophecy, the power in prophecy. You know, a lady came to the ministry because she was pregnant. She had an overdue pregnancy and she wanted to know the mind of God. What is God's opinion regarding this pregnancy? Because she, you know, she was tired. She wanted to give birth and it was a delayed birth for her. So she wanted to know the mind of God. Hence, she came to the church and a word was given by a prophet from God Almighty directly for her. Uh, let us go and see what the prophecy was. You never give birth. Ah. So doctor is not saying the truth. Eh? He said tomorrow. That's what the doctor said. But he said it was the other day. He said it was the other day, eh? And that day it didn't happen. No. And what did I tell you? The day I deliver, I must use my wristband and wait down that the baby will just come out. Okay. So you wanted to deliver your baby December? Yes. This month? Yes. Okay. Okay. You don't want to be among those that will deliver 2022? No. <laughs> no. Uh, you don't like your baby to be January 1st? No. Hi. Who, do we have anybody that was delivered on January 1st here? Huh? Who? Your son. January 1st. Wow. Wow. You don't want your boy to be delivered January 1st. You want your boy December 12th. Tomorrow. You want your boy tomorrow? Yes. Always you say tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> eh? Last time you tell me tomorrow. Now you tell me again tomorrow. Why you don't like January? No, I don't want January. <laughs> you don't want January. You're tired. But the baby likes January. No. Okay. I will, I will give it to you according to what you want. Hmm? Amen. Okay? Okay. Okay. It is done. You know, our prophet prophesied to her, asked her, when are you going to give birth? When do you want to give birth? The doctor has been... <laughs> you know, misleading you, telling you it's tomorrow, it's tomorrow. You know, that was during the church's anniversary, which is the 12th of December. So the doctor informed her she would give birth on the 13th of December. And so, you know, you can see the man of God knows that this baby is not going to come tomorrow. She said, what about January? Don't you want your child to be born amongst those that are born in 2022, January and you know, the lady is, is, is not really in favor of this prophecy. It's not really in favor. She, she's ready to give birth. She wants this baby out today, right? So we see now the man of God says, no, this will happen in January. So we're going to see also later on what really happened. When did this, did this baby come? You know, this reminds me of Zachari Zachariah. Yes, this reminds me of Zachariah, the father of John the Baptist. 
his wife is Elizabeth. You know, he was a servant of God. He was working for God. And an angel, Angel Gabriel, visited him. And he told him in Luke chapter 1, if we go to verse 10, how the angel came to him and told him that your, your prayers have been answered. You will have a son and he will not drink wine. You know, the angel told great things about the son that's going to come, how the son is going to come before Jesus Christ and how many will rejoice of his coming because he will come with a great message. And you know, Zachariah was doubting. He said, no, but I'm old. He said, no, how can it be me and my wife who are old? It cannot be. And angel Gabriel said, I am an angel of God. I'm in the presence of God. You know, I've come for a word for you. And because you have doubted, you will be, let, the, let us go, let us go to the Bible. If we go to Luke 1, um, verse 20, you will see how the angel of God spoke to him. If you go to verse 18, it says, Zachariah asked the angel, how will I be certain of this? For I am old. And my wife is also advanced in age. You see how they disqualify themselves. They say, no, it can't be. We are too old for this. You see? And then the angel replied and said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand and I minister in the presence of God. And I have been sent to you to bring you this good news. And in verse 20, it says, listen carefully. You will continually be silent and unable to speak until the day when these things take place because you did not believe. Imagine, and he said, but my words will be fulfilled at their proper time. This is like a prophecy. When you hear it, you will not believe it. You will doubt, but at the end, because it's the word of God, it will be fulfilled at the proper time. Just as the prophet said to the lady, this baby is coming in January. Would you not like it for you to give birth in January? So that this child will be amongst those that are born in 2022. She said, no, my doctor said tomorrow. <laughs> but you know what? Let us hear what happened after that. When did this baby come? Is it December or is it January? Let us go in here. So my first testimony goes like this. Um, I was pregnant, expecting a baby last year, December. And then we were having a service, the church anniversary. So when, when Prophet um, was launching the, he was launching the new hair ba handbands, and then I decided to launch it. And when I launched it, Prophet asked me, what do I want? So I told Prophet, I would like to give birth tomorrow. And then Prophet said, Ish, but I only see you giving birth in January. And then I said, Prophet, but I can't wait anymore till January. I want to give birth tomorrow. Then Prophet started laughing and said, okay, let it be according to your will. The following week, I came back again. Prophet said, ah, you're still here. You still never give birth. I said, no, Prophet. Please pray for me. I'm tired now. I'm going to give birth. Then he says, my daughter, I told you, I only see you giving birth in January. I said, okay. Then finally, um, December went. January, I came back, the 2nd of January, the, f the first Sunday, I came to church, and then Prophet said, ah, my daughter, you still here? I said, Prophet, please pray for me now. I'm tired now. I want to give birth. He says, when? I said, tomorrow. He said, don't worry. Now it's your time to give birth, and you shall give birth. I said, okay, thank you, daddy. Prophet prayed for me, and then on Tuesday, on Monday night, 12 o'clock, I started getting pains. When I started getting pains, I waited until 6 o'clock in the morning. 
and then I went to the hospital. When I went to the hospital, the doctor said, what brings you here? I said, I'm getting contraction, I'm on labor. The, lab the doctor said, okay, bring your, your card. She checked my card and she says, you are long overdue, you are supposed to give birth in December. I said, yes, but it didn't happen, I'm here. Then she says, okay, let me check. So I jumped on the bed, she checked me, she said, mm -mm, you're not about to give birth, those are false alarm. I said, okay. She says, yeah, but I'm like, I'm having severe pains and I'm bleeding, why? Then she says, I don't know, but you're not about to give birth. I said, okay. Then she says, I can either refer you to a bigger hospital or you can go home and wait. I said, uh, refer me to a bigger hospital. She wrote me a referral and then I went. When I went to the car, my mom asked me, what's going on? I said, we need to go to a bigger hospital. Apparently, I'm not in labor yet. So then my mom says, uh, send a message to the church. I said, I've sent already. So then my mom insisted, call the church. I said, okay. I decided to call the church and the church referred me to Prophet. And then Prophet asked me, where's your morning water? I said, I left it at home. He said, why? Didn't I tell you to take it with you when you go give birth? Go home and fetch it. So we drove back home, we went to fetch the anointed water. The drink and love. And then I called and I said, Prophet, I have my anointed water. Then Prophet said, okay, open it, lift it up. I opened it, I lifted it up, and the prophet prayed and said, drink it three times. I drank it three times and said, okay, now close. Go and give birth. I said, okay. Then they took me to hospital. When I got to the hospital, uh, at 10 o'clock, the doctor said, jump in the bed, let me check what's good. He said, she said, what brings you here? I said, I'm in labor, but then I was referred from the other hospital because they say that uh, I'm not on labor. I have no signs, even though I have contraction and I'm already bleeding, but she says that uh, I'm not really on labor. And then she says, okay, that's weird. Jump on the bed, let me check. When she checked, she says, no, you are on labor. You're already three, uh, three centimeters dilated. Can we put our hands together for Jesus Christ? <laughs> Ma'am, can you just confirm something? So before you contacted the church, you went to the hospital, they said you're not in labor, but only after you took the drink and love, you were in labor, is that correct? That's correct. Can we put our hands together for Master Jesus? <laughs> Ma'am, you may continue with your testimony. So then she's like, oh, you are three centimeters dilated, you are on labor, but you are very swollen. I don't think you'll be able to push. So we'll have to book you in for a C-session. I said, okay. I was just agreeing to everything she was saying. So then she's like, okay, I'll have to take some blood sample just in case we need to give you a blood after the C-session. I said, okay, so she was taking the blood samples and then while she was, when she was done, she took the, the blood sample to the laboratory and she said, I'm coming now. She left me. When she left, my water broke. When she came back at half past 11, I told her my water broke. She says, how come? You were three centimeters dilated, you were still far. I said, yes, my water broke. She says, okay, let me check. When she checked, she says, oh no. The baby's coming. Amen. Can somebody say power? Can you just explain to us how was the delivery process? Just explain to us what happened. So she says, okay, we'll have to take you to high care. There's no time for us to book you in for C-session. She took me to high care. She said, you need to push quickly because the baby is already tired. You've been in labor for too long. I said, okay. I pushed for the first time. She said, you are not pushing. You're putting your baby's life in danger. Push. I pushed for the second time. She says, hey, Sissy, 
I say push. You're putting your child in danger. And then I remembered when I got this from prophet. Prophet said, when you go give birth, you need to run down this in your stomach and say, baby, come down now. Then I looked at it. Then the nurse is like, sorry, Sissy, stop looking at your hands and push. And then I just ignored her. And then I put, I ran down my hands like prophet showed me to my stomach and I said, baby, come out now. And then she says, push. I said, and then I pushed once and the baby came out. Can we clap hands for the miracle working God? People of God, you can do better than that. She delivered just like a Hebrew woman without operation. Glory to God.